printing a 3D dodecahedron, Roman dodecahedron. This is what we're going to cast in silver. We're going to see how it turns out. Stick with Oppa and Oppa talks. Okay, so you've just seen a few pictures of the dodecahedron that I 3D printed and put the sprues on. And I just now finished pouring the investment and what I'm doing is uh, I'm just tapping it lightly so all these bubbles, because uh, I don't have a vacuum machine. Uh, I want to build one, but to do so it's going to cost probably about a good $300 for what I want uh, on my Amazon list. So in the meantime, I found this to be a good substitute by just tapping the sides uh, until all the bubbles come out, or at least to get rid of a lot of those bubbles. So you guys stick around, I'm going to let this dry out for a few days, and then we're going to fire up the furnace and uh, melt some more silver and see if we can get a, uh, a silver dodecahedron, a Roman silver dodecahedron. Stick around, this is Appa with Appa Talks. What we got here is the dodecahedron burning out, all the wax is gone, and all that we got left is the PLA plastic from the 3D print. Right now we got the temperature at a cool 600 degrees, but it's honestly been at about a thousand because I just took the lid off. And uh, we're going to just keep this burning for the next hour or so at a very low temperature while it burns out. And then we'll do the pour. Stick with off top. These two cans. Which one do you think is hotter? The one on the left or the one on the right? Just looking at them without knowing anything about them. Yeah. I'd probably say the one on the left. I know that's wrong, but I would say the one on the left. I wouldn't blame you. I'd say the one on the left too because of that huge ass flame. But if we compare them, if you were to take a guess, how hot do you think they are? Mm, four to six hundred degrees on the left, eleven to thirteen hundred on the right. Let's see. Let's see what they are. I may have cheated. <laughs> so we got 1160 on the right and 214 on the left. I didn't cheat well. That flame just totally gives it away. It doesn't give it away yeah, at all. Look, it's an orange flame. You got blue at the bottom. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'll ramp it up here in a second. We'll get a little bit hotter. On the one on the left. With Appa, Appa Lid on this one. Well, first, I'm going to turn off the gas and let it drop in temperature to about a thousand degrees. Because right now it's at 1200. And we'll just watch that drop to a thousand. Oh, it's dropping quickly. Sweet. Extreme overfill kilo. Actually, I should put that right here. Tiny sucker right here. Okay, there's that one. So temperature at that one, 2,000 degrees. Yeah, dropping. Woo, that's purple. Yeah. Or white. Yeah, that is one hot little sucker. Oh! Yeah. All right, I'll put this here. I hear it bubbling. Alright, you think you got a good spot? Yeah. Damn, that thing is hot, hot, hot. Just don't spill it on me. Okay, I'll try. Do I 
feel that. Last time we had a volcano erupt. Let's hope that's not the same thing this time. Step back. You ready? Yeah. Oh, no volcano. Oh, ho, ho, that looks beautiful. Oh, oh. Dude, the sprues, it's like... The, the sprues pour perfect. They did their job exactly what I wanted. Now let's just hope the mold was good. We'll let this cool off naturally. Whoa. We'll let this cool off naturally. That heart might have been good too. Yeah? Give that to the wife, of course. And then we'll come back for a little bit of cleaning. We'll see what happens. Lapa, lapa talks. Blinded by the light, wrapped up like a deuce. So let, me, let me get these bits yes. of silver out first because I know as soon as we put it in there, this is going to cloud it all up with, with that investment stuff. So. Well, you're just going to roll the that casing around? Pretty much. The investment should just break right apart, but there's like a big piece of silver stuck on the side of this. Maybe I can get that off first, too. Oh uh, yeah, see that? Let me cool that off. And then once I cool this off, then I'll put the whole thing in there. I <coughs> Why can't I get it? There we go. <laughs> right. We're just going to cut that out, right? Yeah, we'll cut that out. Alright, ready? Recording. This is going to be so interesting. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Now it should just uh, dissolve away. If you want to get nice and close in there, that's cool. Because it doesn't look like it's going to spew. Oh, oh you, see that? you see that hole in there? Yeah. So it should just dissolve away. Alright, let me, let me tap it on the ground a little bit. I thought it would dissolve away. Well, turn it on the side and just keep rolling it in the water. Right. Well, you know what? Maybe I can also push it. I mean, the investment's breaking up. Is it? Okay. At least it looks like on that side, yeah. hit it on the ground a few times. Oh look, look at that. Mm-hmm. Alright. It's breaking free. Oh yeah. Alright, there you go. I think like you got a decent pattern. Alright, let's see what we got here. I'm excited. This was the culmination of the entire 3D printing saga. This is why I got the 3D printer in the first place. Alright, let's see. Say it a few more times. Oops, sorry. Let's it this way. It's moving around. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Clean that off a little bit. Alright. I don't I wonder if it's hot still. Well, um, yeah, just gotta poke the investment, I guess, yeah. to break it up. How's the uh, resolution coming out on the camera? It's really good. I mean, I see the shape right there. Okay. Oh, man, I wonder if this is how they actually did it in the old times. So, when I was reading Wikipedia, they said that the Roman dodecahedron was created anywhere between 100 and 200 AD. They don't know what it was used for. A lot of people speculate a candle holder, some kind of ornament to like astronomy. I make it. It's not hot. I mean, it's lukewarm. All right, let's let's get a close up on that. What do you see? Damn. 
<laughs> uh, the white, the light's messing that up, but is it? that comes out. That is beautiful. That, that's. I mean, we pretty... buff it up. I mean, the holes came out. Look at that. The holes came out. Yeah. I mean, the holes came out perfect. Oh my god. I mean, this is this is this is perfect. Oh my god. So this is probably how they did it. We, I mean, first try, first time of trying this technique, and it came out this good. Can you imagine after a huge, a whole bunch of uh, additional attempts? Look, and I don't think I even need the sprues on the bottom part. I think where I put the sprues originally worked perfectly. Hold on, let me see how this looks with the flashlight off. All right. If I could fat finger it. Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's like... No, that's not going Well, we'll get this in the garage. We'll get it all cleaned up. And then we'll come back yeah. and see what it looks up. Nice and... Uh, nice and I came out really well. So, why is it that goldish color? It can't... You know, every time I've done the investment, it's had this goldish color on it. But as soon as I take a wire brush to it or some some kind of a sanding paper, it comes right off. What does the insides look like? I, I can't really get a great angle. Oh, well, wait. No. There's investment material inside there. But do the edges look pretty sharp? They do look like, you know, I can even see the, uh, I can even see some of the print lines of the actual model itself. All right. That came out pretty nice. I am very surprised. Maybe we got a good, uh, good, uh, formula here. Temperature we did pretty good for the burnout. Yeah. The there was a slow buildup on the silver. Yeah. Why did you do the slow buildup again? Um, Why didn't you just blast it to like seventeen hundred to melt it? I was worried the crucible might still had have, have some uh, leftover moisture since it's been left outside. All right. For the last few weeks, just to slowly dry it out any moisture. And then for the mold, yeah. once again, that was a PLA print. It was a PLA print from the CR Creality. With wax sprues. Yeah. That All of these were wax. Okay. And then that was in the investment casting. You had that sit for about 24 hours outside? Um, actually, less than 24 hours. Probably about 18 hours. And that was within a steel cylinder? Yep. That was within this thing right here. So you use a steel cylinder to contain the, plat the investment? Because previously... When I tried this, um, the investment would crack or fall apart when I picked it up. If you look at previous videos, you'll see that. So this was hoping to keep it all together while I pour, which it looks like. Oh, ah, that's that. okay. That's better. Can't really see on the inside, I guess, because of reflection, but it looks good. Yeah. And this was just silver shot and like pre other molds yeah, you didn't scrape any of the slag off yeah basically just junk silver that i've failed with previous pours um yeah. since this was the first time trying i do have an exact model uh another one that i want to try again if this one failed but nice i mean there we go i'll make you one too dude Bob talks. It's been a few days since we saw the uh, the pour. I've spent the time cleaning this up, removing the sprues, sanding it down, and just getting a nice little buffer shine to it. Uh, this is what we came out with. Uh, final weight is 3.5 ounces of pure 999 fine silver. And as you can tell, it turned out as best as I could hope for. Um, did my little stamp here somewhere. The the sprue, I ended up drilling this part out, uh, but that turned out pretty well. And uh, next time, I'm going to go ahead and build another one of these. And I'm going to see if I can actually turn it into a candle holder um, and go from there. So thank you for enjoying watching the making of a Roman dodecahedron. This is Appa with Appa Talks.